This little guy has no animations, but with a few simple rules we can bring him to life. In this video we're going through three simple concepts to procedurally animate this character. And if you want to try it out for yourself, you can download this character in the description. And I've also included a more refined one that I used for a final animation, so you can play around with that as well. And I'll be showing this in full later on in the video once I've explained these concepts. Here's the first concept. So we take this chain and we rotate the first piece of this chain and the rest move with it because they're all attached. And then we go to the second link in this chain and reset its rotation back to where it was in the previous update. And then we rotate it part of the way towards where it wanted to be, but not all of the way. And then we go to the third link and we're going to do the exact same again. So on the third link, we reset its rotation. So it's all back horizontal again. And we rotate it slightly towards where it was trying to be. And this all happens within one frame. But if we continually repeat this process over time, what we get is a propagation of this rotation change. So the first piece moves, that influences the second piece to move, but it's not all the way there, so it's delayed. So that delays all of the ones that come after that in the chain, and so on and so on. So the further out it is, the more delayed it will be. And then I've also added a bit of acceleration to it, so it kind of overshoots the target and wobbles back into place. So this looks interesting, but not too interesting on a chain. Let's look at our character. So when he moves his head down, you can see this rotation slowly propagate through the rest of his body. And this isn't just for up and down rotations, so if he turns to the side, you'll see that his tail has to take time to eventually swing around. And it's also for twisting or any combination of rotations, it will propagate through the rest of the body. So from this one rule alone, we've got some interesting movements, but let's try and make the legs a bit more interesting. So we'll take one of the legs and we'll just draw a line straight out in front and then we'll spin this line around and we'll use that end point as the target for where that foot is trying to reach using a simple IK solver. So now when we apply this to all of the legs, they're all rotating in circles and you can just think that I've offset those circles so that they're all out of phase so when one leg's up, the other's down. And then the speed of the rotation of these circles is mapped to how fast the character's moving in the direction that the circle is spinning in. This is how it looks when there's a ground below. You can see that the legs loosely track the movement of the ground. And I added a simple line trace just to prevent those endpoints from being under the ground so they'd always be on the surface. And if he moves away from the ground, I just moved that circle that was rotating back and upwards so it looks kind of like he's swimming and then transition it back to underneath the character if there is a ground detected. So all simple so far, but there's one more concept that I want to add in. So these front arms, I want them to move in some kind of interesting way, but mostly retain their position. And similar to the first concept that we covered where we delayed the rotation, we're going to delay the translation. So when one thing moves, the other one is delayed trying to play catch up. And when we apply this to the character, the character's body moves, and the endpoint targets for these arms is delayed. And that adds a look of weight or inertia to the arms. And just with those three concepts in place, I then took this block out version of the character and sculpted it. And again, this is downloadable in the description if you want to play around with it. And because this all runs in real time, I just recorded it in game swimming around and then turned it into this animation. And I added some effects and camera movement and so on. So as you could imagine, if you try to animate this through traditional means where you are animating every single leg, every part of the tail, every possible move that it could make, so it could go up, down, left, right, and then combination, so up, down, up, down, up, down, and so on, it would take you forever. But let's say you did manage to create those 10,000 animations. You'll still need to program a lot of logic to tell the game when to play those specific animations based on the current state of the character, so how fast he's moving, the direction he's moving, the previous direction he was moving in, and so on be very complex and you're likely thinking at this point of course for a creature like this procedural animation is the way well that's a good first step but i would say that for any creature or human or animal or robot or whatever that moves they're moving with some intent and that intent has logic behind it and then that's influenced by real world limitations and physics all of which we can procedurally emulate and of course the more complex a character or the more familiar we are with recognizing how they should move the more rules that you need to create. But at least in theory, any movement that a human could make or any stylized movement that you might have for a character could be created procedurally. And games are dynamic. They're not just cutscenes or movies playing. And I think the animations should also be dynamic as well. 
And there's no reason that any of these dynamic systems can't work in conjunction with regular animations, so typical keyframed animations. You can combine and get the best of both worlds. And once you get the system in place, everything just works. If you find this topic interesting, I've got other videos on the channel that talk about these concepts. And if you're a game developer, I've got some specific tutorials that show you how to implement these things. If you're really interested, I have some longer six, seven, eight hour courses that are linked in the description as well. But if you just want to try things out for yourself, just download the character in the description, put it into any engine of your choice or animation software, and just see what you can create. And surely the free giveaway deserves a like and subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching.